director of the USC Fisher Museum of Art. Up until yesterday, I would have said this was the single art museum of the University of Southern California. But if you've been reading the newspapers, you know now that USC is the proud owner of the Pacific Asia Museum, the art museum of the Pacific Asia region uh, in Pasadena. So we now have two fabulous art museums. And uh, in addition, we are the proud uh, owners of the Gamble House, which is, uh, which is another treasure in the historic house, also a museum. So what I want to do is really set the stage for you understanding that at USC, we treasure the arts. And you're now uh, participating in an evening with one of our most treasured university professors, uh, Damon Joyer. Damon Joyer is going to be in charge of this evening. He has arranged it and he will introduce all of the players. But before I um, turn the evening over to him, I want to make sure that you know how much of a treasure uh, Dana Joy is for us. He is an internationally known and well-acclaimed poet. Uh, he's the former chairman of the National Endowment of the Arts, and we all, those of us who are in the art world, know him for that, and the work that he did there. But he is at USC now, along with our growing body of museums, he is one of our most treasured faculty members. And he is the Judd Whitney Professor of Poetry and Public Culture at USC. He's published four full-length uh, volumes of, of, of poetry, as well as eight chapbooks. Uh, his poetry collections have won the National Book Award and a number of other recognitions. I think that one of the important things that I want to stress about Professor Joya is that he has brought poetry back, in a way, into the civic culture. We, his students memorize poetry. It will come to them as they live their lives and help them through incredible moments of both stress and happiness and joy and sadness. He has truly reformed and revolutionized the way poetry is approached uh, in the United States and as we live it. I'd like to introduce right now Professor Dana Joya, whose evening this is, and I hope you welcome him. sing and perform, but actually 
premiere uh, you know, one of his works this evening. But I didn't want to work too hard this evening. And I know that the success uh, of management depends on your ability to delegate. Uh, and so I've taken three uh, remarkable students, uh, fellow students for many of you, in my uh, Art of Poetry class, uh, Meyer Richard Craven, Travis Fox, and Ramiro Ochoa, and uh, they are each going to recite one of the programs uh, for this evening. So without further ado, you know, uh, you know, Vicki, would you like to take it away? Did it 
in the church where a wedding has been. Lives in a dream, wakes at the window, wearing the face that she keeps in the jar by the door.
darkness of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare grasp the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when the heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp dare its deadly terrors grasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame? thy fearful symmetry.
the bench, the hatter singing as he stands. The woodcutter's song, the plowboy's on his way in the morning, or at noon, intermission, or at sundown. The delicious singing of the mother, or of the young wife at work, or of the girl sewing or washing. Each singing what belongs to him or her and to none else. The day what belongs to the day. At night, the party of young fellows, robust, friendly, singing with open mouths their strong, melodious songs.
Such walls in 
the last uh, section of the concert, we will present uh, three paired works. A double setting of two poems, a famous song, and a new variation. The first of these poems is a sonnet by Edna St. Vincent Millay. What lips my lips have kissed, and where and why, I have forgotten. And what arms have lain under my head till morning. But the rain is full of ghosts tonight that tap and sigh upon the glass and listen for reply. And in my heart there stirs a quiet pain for unremembered lads that not again will turn to me at midnight with a cry. Thus in the winter stands the lonely tree, nor knows what birds have vanished one by one, yet knows its boughs more silent than before. I cannot say what loves have come and gone. I only know that summer sang in me a little while that in me sings no more.
Your command. 
own Morton Lawrence, uh, you know, one, one of the great treasures of this university. <laughs> Our revels now are ended almost. Uh, we have one more number, but before uh, I introduce it, I want to remind you that after the concert, through those doors, you know, you know, Behind me, there will be a reception in the courtyard to which you are all invited. Uh, and I also want to take this opportunity to thank Visions and Voices for allowing this incredible uh, collection of artists uh, to perform a, a unique program that would be unlikely to have happened under any other aegis. And what Visions and Voices gives us is what all artists need. <laughs> Money, the long green. Cash, stash, rhino, jack, or just plain dough. Chalk it up, fork it over, shove it out. Watch it burn holes through pockets. To be made of it. To have it to burn. Greenbacks, double eagles, mega bucks, or Ginny Mays. It greases the palm, feathers the nest holds heads above water, makes both ends meet. Money breeds money. Gathering interest, compounding daily, always in circulation, money. You don't know where it's been, but you put it where your mouth is, and it talks. <laughs> Here are 